Good morning, everyone. And I'll say what I've said before. I want to thank everyone in St. Louis County for their patience as we get through these very trying times. The sacrifices that everyone has, has made so far has had a big impact on the spread of this virus in our community. As we continue to work on our plans for reopening the economy, we have to be patient with those who have a different opinion. This is a novel coronavirus. That means we haven't seen it before. The doctors and scholars and scientists are still learning about this virus every day, and we're still trying to figure out the best, best path forward. As a medical doctor, I'm certainly familiar with viruses. I know the COVID-19 virus is highly contagious and it affects individuals differently. Some people don't have any symptoms at all, and some people become very, very sick. We know that the precautions that we have to take um, in order to prevent the spread of this virus are very difficult, but we have to continue taking uh, precautions. We have to continue um, this uh, social distancing until a vaccine is available. And we know that a vaccine will not be available anytime soon. But these social distancing restrictions that we have taken have made a real difference. And now it's time to talk about what it would look like um, ending some of the restrictions and getting our businesses open again. We know that the economy has taken a devastating hit. Livelihoods have been destroyed and elected officials like myself have been put in the position of having to choose between lives and livelihoods. We understand what that means. But the decisions we've made in this pandemic, we believe have saved, saved lives. We have seen this become a partisan issue, but as someone once said, politics is in everything that we do. During a pandemic, there are almost as many data sets as there are opinions. We need to follow the models of our top healthcare officials. I speak with Dr. Garza on a regular basis, who leads the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic T Task Force, and you all have seen the information that he presents on a daily basis. I'm in multiple conversations a day with our public health department and the information they are processing as this region responds to the pandemic. We expect Governor Parson to, re re to relax uh, the uh, stay-at-home orders for the state uh, next week, and we expect announcements later today on what that would look like. He has the contacts of the entire state in mind when he makes his decisions. I don't believe that St. Louis County is ready to relax our orders. St. Louis County is much different than the rest of the state. We have almost 40% of the uh, diagnosis of, of COVID-19 of the whole state of Missouri. But even though it's too early to lift our stay at home orders, it's not too early to talk about what that might look like. And we will begin with our parks. Tomorrow, I will be announcing a plan to reopen with some restrictions, our county parks. We will allow um, some of our residents to enjoy some of our best amenities and our stir crazy kids will have some options to release some of their energy. They can certainly take advantage of the spring weather. Closing our parks proved necessary to help stem the spread of the coronavirus in our community. Oh, reopening them with some restrictions, we believe is the right thing to do. Recently, I announced that retired business leader Cindy Brinkley was joining our team as a lead advisor on the county CARES response. We know this crisis has three uh, components to it. We have the public health crisis, we have the um, humanitarian crisis, and the economic crisis. Cindy will oversee the economic recovery. I've asked Deb Patterson to oversee the humanitarian relief. Deb is a former president of the Monsanto Fund, which on a yearly basis uh, delivered tens of millions of dollars to the St. Louis region to um, support community efforts and community challenges. Deb is also the former president of the Red Cross of the Eastern District of Missouri. Deb will be volunteering her time in this initiative. Joining Cindy will be Dr. Paul Hensey, who is working part-time in our health department. Paul is the former uh, chief medical officer for Mercy Hospital here in St. Louis. Also joining us will be Kathy Reamer. Kathy is a former chief compliance officer for Enterprise Holdings. Kathy will be responsible for the compliance part of our County Cares Act. Um, 
Kathy will also be a volunteer. In dealing with this pandemic, it's important to bring um, the top expertise and top um, individuals into our administration to help with our county response. We've also heard a lot about contact tracing over the past few months. This is an important part of uh, stopping the spread of the virus in our community. Contact tracing is something we've been working on for some time. We currently had uh, 70 individuals working in our health department. Last Friday, when I announced that we would be hiring 100 more individuals, we had, um, as of today, over 200 applications. Our health department now is going through those applications and identifying individuals that would be able to help us. We also have new technology to help us with contact tracing, technology that's been built by our IT department. It looks very similar to the technology that we have for um, tracking um, opioid overdose, uh, overdoses in our community, which we started doing a few months ago. Uh, this new, new technology will help us a great deal. Historically, for contact tracing, this has been a pencil and paper process where um, uh, paper files have been passed back and forth between individuals. But having this technology now uh, electronically will allow people to work from home and will also limit uh, staff to staff contact um, during this response. Contact tracing is a very important part of the public health response. It was part of the response in the history of our country to the smallpox epidemic. And it was um, an important part in containing the spread of smallpox until a vaccine was available. It's time consuming, but it's necessary. In fact, contact tracing is much like the work of a police detective or an investigative reporter putting together the pieces of a puzzle. When someone's in close contact with a person who's tested positive for COVID-19, it's important to find them, get them the information they need to keep them safe so they can get treatment and they can know the symptoms and they can have access to support while they're waiting to see whether or not they may also contact COVID-19. As our daily numbers show, as you can follow through stlcorona.com, we continue to have more cases every day. We continue to have people in our community who are dying from COVID-19. And we cannot lose sight of that when we're talking about peaks and plateaus and recovery. This will forever be a part of who we are, including our response. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. No, it would be sooner than that, and we'll make an announcement in the morning with all the details about the restrictions and what that will look like. We do believe that we can do this uh, safely if we adjust the behavior of people in the park, um, provide them with uh, instructions and support, and can prevent uh, crowding. We all know that a, crowding par a crowded park will lead to a closed park. We've seen that across the country, and we've seen that here in our community. But we think we have a plan moving forward. Yes. Um, I know we've heard a lot of from the council and from other people about the spending of federal funding from the CARES mm -hmm. Act. And so what's your reaction to the people that are against you having the power to spend the $173 million from the federal funds without the oversight of the council? Well, the council will always be involved in our decisions. When you're in an emergency, it's um, not responsible to um, come back to the council on a weekly basis or an emergency basis to be able to buy uh, more tests if those tests become available to be able to buy more PPE to be able to respond to a humanitarian crisis, crisis to be able to move quickly. This is just like any other grant. We've appropriated $270 million worth of grants over the past five years. They've all been appropriated by the council. They've all been monitored by the granting agency for compliance. The monitoring of this grant will be by the Office of the U.S. Inspector General to make sure that it's spent appropriately and uh, within the guidelines. We will have something that's never been seen before with a grant. We have an accountability portal in real time that will uh, show us where the money is spent. But this really is a decision by the council. Unfortunately, um, it's become partisan with the council divided on partisan lines on the, on the best way forward. Um, but I hope that even though there are differences on this one opinion that we can, or this one bill that we can continue to move forward and take care of the needs of the people in St. Louis County I've always looked to the council for advice and direction on everything that we've done in uh, my administration. 
even much more than anyone has done in the past. And I will continue to do that even if we disagree on this one issue or others moving forward. So we follow the advice of the Attorney General as far as the response to the Sunshine Act. The previous administration um, was sued by the Attorney General. My administration uh, settled that lawsuit and we now take guidance from them and uh, they're the ones that helped give us advice on how to respond to this. We recognize that that information as to whether or not it would be a public record um, would be controversial and we asked the Attorney General for advice before we set up that system. Uh, to accept complaints and that's why um, online it advises individuals that unfortunately this is a public record and we have no control over that. Um, what people do with that information what they be, when they have that um, reflects more on, on the individuals who have that information uh, than anything else. I do not um, and would not expect um, anyone to retaliate against someone who made a complaint or uh, elim uh, identified a concern in good faith um, and I think there are many rights for people who are retaliated against um, but it doesn't stop um, bad behavior on social media which unfortunately we see a lot of and in a hyper-partisan election environment and unfortunately this issue about whether or not uh, to follow safety orders whether or not to close um, difficult choices between lives and livelihoods is an extraordinarily partisan issue that starts at the top of the leadership of our country and filters right down into local government. Yes, yeah, so um, information related to uh, public health orders and information related to stuff within the police department, um, those are treated differently. And again, um, I follow the advice of the attorneys and the attorney general's office. Uh, that's not um, something that I can dive deeply into. Um, I just ask the attorneys what the right path forward is. I ask the highest law enforcement officer in the state what the right path forward is, and I follow those. I think this is more a reflection of human behavior. and a very complex time in our history of our country and history of our region and a hyper-partisan environment that we live in right now while we're struggling through a, a difficult time. This is um, becoming more polarized, this balance between lives and the economy, and we're seeing some very unfortunate behavior on all sides, but I do have to follow the law. We are competing um, with the rest of the country and the federal government to buy tests. We have the same challenges as everyone in the country. Um, we know that uh, New York has been devastated and um, they were only able to get a few thousand tests to test their population for the presence of COVID-19. And uh, we will continue to compete. We um, um, uh, offered uh, vendor information and opened up bidding on Friday to uh, purchase as many tests as we could we didn't put a limit on that for anyone to bid on how many tests they could supply us. And uh, we just asked them to tell us what that would cost and we'll compare those. We will um, work cooperatively with other jurisdictions in our region to purchase tests. Um, every day, a new, um, a new entity comes onto the market to offer tests, but they generally only have a handful because they also struggle to purchase tests in our country when there aren't enough tests being made for the people who need them. Our health systems have access to some tests they share them with us, but as it stands right now, we don't have a robust enough testing environment for everyone who is symptomatic to get tests. And that's an important part of our reopening strategy. We know that if we reopen before we have uh, a good testing environment, then we risk uh, not being able to uh, test, track, isolate, and contain the spread of this virus in our community. And that would put us at high risk for a second wave um, even sooner than November. So it's very important that we uh, have the, the virus infection rate in our, our county down dramatically from where it is now, and then that we have the ability to test 
and we are all extraordinarily frustrated with our inability to find tests that we need in our country. And our community is, is competing very aggressively for those just like everyone else. Yeah, it's, um, if, um, if you want a slow response to an emergency, tie up the funding. Everybody knows that's how it works. And uh, we don't need to be spending our time going back to the council every week or having emergency meetings because we found something that we need for our community. Um, what we do need to do is have a good working relationship with the council on their ideas to help support our community moving forward. I've always looked to them both Republicans and Democrats for their ideas and for their direction and that was my my leadership style when I was chair of the County Council for years. Unfortunately this uh, this is an election year and things become partisan in an election year and unfortunately we're in a, a hyper partisan environment because of the division in our community on how to approach um, this epidemic and the balance between lives and livelihoods is very deeply divided um, and, and um, you know, people are choosing sides. We have to try and move through that. We have to respect people who have different positions than we do on an individual bill or an individual issue. We need to look past the, um, the rhetoric that sometimes accompanies, accompanies those positions. And we have to look behind that and listen to what they have to say because sometimes behind that rhetoric is still, there's still good ideas. And we have to find those ideas and work and move forward with them together. And that's what our residents will expect. They will expect us to find a way forward and work together. And I'll continue to try and do that. Hey, Sam, I wanted to clarify something really quickly. Kathy is from Energizer, not Enterprise. Oh, did I say Enterprise? I may have. That may have been in your remarks. It's a mistake. I yep. just wanted to make sure. Energizer. That's right. Energizer Holdings. That is in my remarks if I said Enterprise. <laughs> they are very different. Both fine institutions. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.